Hi guys, it's Kelly, and we're working on Lesson 2 of my improv series about theater games for the lone actor. Uh, a lot of what I'm doing is actually based on the book by Viola Spolin, Theater Games for the Lone Actor. Um, this is a terrific book. Again, uh, it came out like in 2001. Um, she wrote this shortly before she passed away, but her son is Paul Sands, who is the guy who founded Second City. And I really like a lot of the exercises that are in here, and I use them when I teach. So uh, last time we did Self with Self. And what was Self with Self? Self with Self was exploring your environment around you and how that feels pressed up against you versus you pressed up against the world. For instance, the difference between a ring on your finger and your finger in a ring. It's too different when you kind of sit back and think about it. It's two different sensations. Now, with theater games uh, for the lone actor, one of the other things she talks about is substance. Too often, I think, when we're doing improv, we like to be talking heads, and a lot of times we'll sit with our partner and we'll just stand and we'll start having a conversation. Well, you know what that happens in real life, but visually it's not very interesting. So what I want to do is kind of break you guys out of that by exploring things. And sometimes when you're doing improv, it is so fast and people are over talking and everybody's trying to get their point across and it's so loud. And you know what? The audience just gets lost and it's so obvious that everybody's trying to one-up themselves. So what we want to do right now is set up object permanence. And where that also helps is, you know, this is a red curtain behind me, but you know what? This could be anything. This could be ancient Greece, this could be a 1950s diner, this could be inside of somebody's apartment. It could be England um, during Game of Thrones or something like that. It can be just about anything and the more that you try to develop your atmosphere and object permanence, the more that your scenes are going to take on different dimensions. So let's say you're just in an apartment, you're going to the refrigerator, you're getting out a drink, you close it, you're opening that up and you're taking a drink, okay? So you want to pay attention to where the refrigerator was. You want to pay attention to where you put your drink. Now, I put my drink there. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to drink it. You want your scene partner to pay attention to where that object is because if you do this, I just walk through the refrigerator. Ouch. And if you're doing um, a show where kids are, they will definitely call you on that. So first of all, what I want you to do is just get a sense of weight, and this is one of the Viola Spolin exercises, is just take the time and be quiet and examine the space between your hands. Now sometimes what's kind of cool is you might actually see like little streaks of electricity between your fingers. That's your electromagnetic field. It's not weird. It's part of your aura, but everything but everything has an electromagnetic field. So if you're really kind of attuned to that, you might see that. If not, just try to manipulate the space and feel that and make it bigger. And you can make it smaller, kind of like, you know, if you've ever seen The Incredibles, Frozone can sit there and create water out of the air and then freeze. He's such a cool character. So kind of think about that, you know, what would you have between your hands that might be a superpower that you could make into something to dispatch your enemies, right? So you can create that for yourself. So make it big again, make it small. You can do all these really cool things with the atmosphere. So I really want you to take time to examine that. How heavy is this? Is one side heavier than the other? So really, you know, maybe it's becoming a sword. Swords aren't light, so if you're gonna sit there and go like that, even lightsabers are not that light. They're still kind of heavy. This one's a weighted ball, okay? So put that in your hand, then take it out and see how your hand stays. Put it in. Take it out, and it doesn't have to be a weighted ball, it can be any kind of object, but really observe the weight with it. Alright, so this is not a bouncy ball, so if I'm going to be throwing it from one hand to the other, to the other, to the other, and then I'm going to mime it, 
and maybe it's getting heavier. Oh, ah, um, drinks again. I had my soda right here that I drank. Take this cup and really look at it. Is it cold when you pick it up? This is metal, so it's going to reflect the outside. Is it cold? If you've got a hot drink in there, is it going to be hot? And feel that. As your hand stays on there, it's going to start to warm up, right? So if I take that down, I still have that working right there. Now what happens if I drink with it and I spill something? Is that hot or cold? So if it's hot, am I going to go, ah, ah, oh. Or, you know, cold, like, oh, hmm, oh, cold. Or brain freeze, ah, oh, that was cold. That was cold. Again, so it gives you a little bit more to work with and to create the world around you. You got coffee. Is it hot tea? What kind of beverage do you have in here? Is it bitter? Is it sweet? Did somebody make you your coffee the way you like it? Oh, or not? Now you take that out, and maybe you want to hold it so you can drink it. Um, sometimes you're reading a book, and I highly, actually highly recommend this one, Never Have I Ever, by Jocelyn Jackson. She also has a theater background and some improv, and I met her, and she's like super cool. And this is a really good read. So when you have downtime that we all have right now, um, get a good book and read it. And again, support your local bookstores. You can go on Amazon, but go find a local bookstore, order it through them, and they'll get a portion of the sales. But so if I'm holding it like this, my hand is gonna be different than if I take it down and I'm opening it. See how that changes from there to there. Okay, so if I'm thumbing through it, and I'm looking at it, okay, now let's take it off. Now I'm thumbing through it, and now my finger's going down, and I can start reading. And you know, if you're really connected, sometimes you can actually see words. That's another exercise that I do, is called the library. Explore what's around you. Um, you know, sometimes, again, we like to talk a lot in scenes, well, what about if it's a husband and a wife and they're talking and sometimes you get suggestions like bathroom. They want to see scenes in bathrooms with a gynecologist and a proctologist. Mm. Well, maybe the gynecologist and the proctologist are husband and wife. You might be able to mention that as an occupation. A lot of profound conversations go on in the bathroom. So maybe somebody's putting on their makeup. Maybe somebody's brushing their teeth. That's going to make your scene way more interesting than, hi, honey, I guess you want to use the toilet and make fart sounds. That's pretty obvious. The audience is expecting that. What they may not be expecting is that maybe the gynecologist is nervous about her own pregnancy test. <gasps> Twist. Again, not saying things can be huge. Like, uh, again, a husband or wife or maybe just two partners talking and one of them's doing the dishes and she's very adamant or he's very adamant about doing the dishes. And uh, I don't know, the other partner's going, what's wrong, honey? And they say, everything's fine. It's fine, honey. Everything's fine. Okay, FYI, a little uh, relationship advice. If the person that you're talking to is very agitated and saying it's fine, it's not fine. So those are the things, again, that you can play off with. So someone may be saying fine, and if you in the scene just go, okay, well, I guess everything's good. I'm going to go. That's not it. Being able to pick up on the fact that that person is very agitated while they're doing dishes. Maybe they don't like doing dishes, but they're putting it aside. That's gonna change the scope of your scene. So be thinking about that. Think about, you know, the weights of balls. Think about a banana. Maybe the banana can be a weapon, particularly if it's overly ripe and the person's wearing taffeta. That could be a problem. But think about that. Think about peeling the banana and eating the banana. You know, you have it now. Gonna peel it? Is it soft? Is it ripe? Those are the things, again, that are really gonna set you apart as an improviser. So anyway, I hope you found this object permanence useful. Go create your own world. I know we're all stuck at home, but you know what? Take a trip to ancient Greece. What would the streets feel like? What would your toga feel like? 1950s diner, you know? People had eggs on everything. 
So, you know, sit and enjoy that and, and really take the time to explore that for yourself. And I guarantee you by the time we're all finished with this and we're all back in class and able to do things together, your technique's going to be way above where it was before. So thanks so much. Stay home, stay safe, stay positive, and I'll see you next time.